Here's the come to Jesus moment I would have with you if you were my client would be. Yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for. <laughs> okay, so here's the here's the deal is like you're you're five six and one fifty one. I I I without even seeing you right now, I, I imagine you're in pretty good shape. I mean, but it sounds like you want more. You want this. Yes. I want to look badass in my bikini, which is totally a fair goal. But what comes with that is another level of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the question is, do you really want it that bad? Is it worth giving up some of those social events that you really enjoy doing? And yeah. I and I would not impose my thoughts on on you at all. Oh, I would right. I would I would pull it out of you. I would say, listen, Megan. I think you you look great. You're doing great. You've got great balance in your life. Sounds like you and your husband have a great weekends mm -hmm. and you enjoy yourself and you still manage to stay in shape the rest of the time. I, I, I would really challenge you and say, is that bikini body that you're saying, is it really something you really, really want that bad? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. so, then we have to evaluate some of these other things that you're doing that fly right in the face of those results. Hey, real quick, here's the giveaway for today. The new MAPS program, we just released it, MAPS Symmetry. One of you will get it for free. You just got to do this. Leave a comment below, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you get free access to the newest and most exciting MAPS workout program. This is a program designed specifically to balance out the body and develop a symmetrical, beautiful physique and a strong physique. There's actually a five-by-five five phase in this program towards the end. It's really cool. By the way, it is a launch. It is a brand new program. So for everyone else, if you want to sign up for it, check this out, right? It'll normally retail at $177, but right now you can get Map Symmetry for $97. Plus, we will throw in some free stuff. We have the Muscle Building Secrets of Isometrics. That's an ebook. That's normally $47. You get that for free. Plus, we have Reverse Dieting 101. If you want to learn how to reverse diet to boost your metabolism, eat more protein, more calories, and still get leaner, this is a great ebook. That's going to be $47, but that's also for free. So, little recap $97 gives you Map Symmetry, newest maps program, plus the Muscle Building Secrets of Isometrics ebook, plus Reverse Dieting 101 ebook, all included with that one price. If you're interested, go to mapssymmetry.com and then use the code SYM50 for the giveaways and that discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Be science-based, but don't be science-bound. Science is a very effective tool to figure out the truth and what works and what doesn't work, but it is not an ideology or religion. Becoming science-bound can really cause lots of problems. Was that our good friend Max who said that? Max Lugavere that said that quote, quote. And I, like I loved it so much because I've been trying to communicate that for a long time now. I just didn't have a, an exceptional quote that really kind of puts it all together. And a lot of the examples I'll use, and I'll use the obviously the health industry because that's the one that I'm you know most privy to. You'll often see people downplay certain herbs or uh, health practices that have hundreds or thousands of years of practice or anecdote or culture because there isn't a you know controlled double blind placebo study. Yeah. So I'll say something like, well, this particular supplement herb like ginseng or ashwagandha or whatever has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years for these types of things. They'll say, well, where's the study that shows that it works? And I don't really believe it. And it's like, well, anecdote, uh, after hundreds and hundreds of years, is truth. In fact, I would trust that over a single study because oftentimes single studies don't reveal long-term effects or side effects or whatever. It's and repeatable. It, yes, and I hate it when people become dogmatic about uh, science because that can really lead people uh, in the wrong way. And it doesn't take into... Uh, sometimes nuances and context. Well, right? and especially in our space, because I feel like in nutrition and exercise, it is so nuanced. Yes. I mean, so many of these things, we can't be replicated because of uh, how nuanced it is. And there's so many variables. So, uh, and I think more so in our space than almost any other oh. space that I can think of when you talk about science. I remember as a trainer and, and, and first like starting to piece that together, like looking at studies and then, and then right away I'd read another study that almost like flew right in the face of the study that I just read before. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, uh -huh. well then which one's right? So, well, technically they both are, you know, what, what, one of them's measuring one little bit of a difference. And it's like you take, and you see these fitness people that will take something that has truth to it and they'll run with it and expand beyond it. Yes. Oh, this is what the science says. Therefore everything is. This. Yeah. And it's like, Whoa, like, yeah. no, that's, it's, it's not that no. simple. A great, here's a great example. If you were if you were science bound, 
20 years ago, the form of exercise that produced the best health effects, the best longevity, the best for weight loss, the best anything that has to do with health would have been uh, steady state cardio. Steady state cardio was superior. Now, why? Or running in general, they yeah, would say. Now, why? It's because strength training, for example, was never studied in that context. It was always studied from a performance standpoint. Mm -hmm. And the the general, the weak studies that they had really looked at, you know, extreme cases of strength athletes and, uh, you know, extreme athletes, which that's, you never look to those people for longevity or health. Now, 20 years later, scientists and doctors are saying what we've said for so long, which is strength training is one of the best ways to it's improve protective. longevity and health. Yeah, yes. it has like the best qualities about it for longevity. But yeah, like you said, it was just never tested in that direction before. No. Well, this, this conversation kind of reminds me of what we just recently, or you in particular, Sal, because it was you who actually took the reins and, and started to go back and forth. I think I sent it over. Like, could you see our boy, Eugene Tao? Sure. Here you go. Anybody who claims to be able to correct your posture either has no fucking idea what they're talking about or is trying to make a lot of money off you. Because there is no posture that has been definitively shown to be good or bad or to keep you free from injury or pain. So there you go. And I sent over the the message and then Sal was like, I can't help myself. I have to I have to talk to I have to talk about this because it I feel like I know well, I know his intentions. He has two major intentions. Like there there are certain people that I know that he's trying to address that are scammers that are out there that are trying to just get people's money. So I I, I appreciate that. But the other thing he's trying to do is to say something that's controversial that um it, that some of us may think is common knowledge kind of uh, to create uh, attention and argument and debate which feeds the instagram algorithm which gives him yeah. more likes views yes. and, and people and I following can, him. i can appreciate that the, the only yeah. thing i don't like about it is you have to be careful because through that process what he did is he confused the shit out of i guarantee he's coaches the hell yeah, out of a lot desired of desired outcome trainers. you always got to keep that top and of point mind. and point them in the wrong direction it, because his original statement on there was if a coach or trainer tells you that they could help correct your posture or improve your posture through exercise, something along those lines, they're ripping you off, right? And it's like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. No. And so then there was someone else that commented underneath and brought up studies about exercises to impro improve posture and the either insignificant or small improvements in pain relief. Therefore, it's a waste of time. And that's a great example of being science bound because pain is so complex. You can't use that as the only metr metric. In fact, you could give someone, there's studies that show you could give someone antidepressants and their back pain disappears, or someone could be stressed out or anxious and they experience pain differently, or people who work out experience pain differently than people who don't. And you talk to any pain specialist just how challenging it is to treat pain because it's such a complex thing. So if you, so if you use that as your metric, I mean, here's another example. There's a study, and we'll link it, that showed that there were people who got a fake knee surgery and they compared it to people who got a real knee surgery. Yeah. And the people with the fake knee surgery had just as much pain relief as the people who got the real knee surgery. So does that mean knee surgery is all fake and garbage? No. Now I can make a clickbaity post and say, knee surgery, any doctor tells you you need knee surgery, they're ripping you off. It's obviously more complex than that. So him and I went back and forth, and in his comments, he essentially said, "Oh yeah, it's way more complex." I'm like, "Well, you gotta, you gotta correct what you said, dude, because yeah. a lot of people are gonna hear that, immediately jump to it, see the two or three studies, and be like, well, training and, to correct posture is a waste of time." And the irony is, I he puts out such great content. I see him posting uh, mobility stuff, and why fuck around with mobility then? Yeah, I mean, what's your? How do you how do you reconcile that? That you that you don't want to improve posture. So what, what's the point of moment? Just to improve movement, but we're not really trying to fix posture or make improve, you know, have more optimal posture. Like it reminds me of the, uh, the camp that also gets uh, all crazy about good, bad food. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, it's like, Oh, and that, I know that's what he was attacking, right? That it's bad posture. He was attacking the, the verbiage that some coaches and trainers use to make their point that, Hey, you have bad posture. Oh, well, right. technically we don't know if that's bad posture. Like sort or not. of like marketing, uh, it has been negative uh, right away to, to pull you in, to sell you something. Uh, when, yeah. Which is not the, I mean, improving posture is just something that will help a lot of people tremendously. And it's something that you can focus on, uh, and build, uh, you know, off of that. So I just don't understand like the angle he's trying Listen, to take with I've this. seen people's posture change, uh, dramatically through exercise. I've also oh, seen fuck it. Fuck yes. I've also seen it change dramatically through attitude. You ever watch a, a depressed kid? 
you know, lighten up and watch their posture change. Lots of things change posture, and posture well, is quite an important thing. And it, should I just like throw out all of what I learned in biomechanics? Yeah. Should I just learn about, yeah, like every like optimal position of, of the joint and its function? Like you can improve these things. Well, the whole like there's no good or bad. It's very strange. I even said it in the comments. So this is a very postmodernist like take. Like there is yeah. no good or bad. What's it's up all is down, actually. It's yeah. all relative. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. You know, just, dude. no, it doesn't work that Which, way. Here's the thing, though. There, there's some truth to that. But the problem is like when you're when you're trying to convey something to the general population to get a point across to help them or better them. Yeah. Dude, this is the same thing, the same problem I had with way back when the first time that we addressed him on the on the show with the squat thing. It's not that his statement is necessarily wrong. It's that all I can think about is me as a young kid who's being told that, you know, squats aren't that important. You don't need to do them. It's like, that's all I needed to hear. And then, you know what's happening right now is somebody who's got bad posture is hearing that, oh, that's all, it's all nuanced. It doesn't matter. Now, oh, cool. I'm not going to work on it. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's all you're, you're giving the green light for people that should be working on improving their movement patterns or working on their overall posture. Listen, if you think that fucking sit on a, on a, an iPad like this all day, long for kids and what we're seeing with chronic pain in kids now that we didn't see just two decades ago if you don't think that has something to do with them having poor posture or yeah. less favorable or what posture, led to that posture yeah, yes and then and then if you it's think that it would not crutches. be ideal to try and correct that or work on that that's crazy to me and no. it's bad advice no it's insane so part of the argument was well that's their best posture because that's how their body most moves most efficiently well, yes that's why we have movement patterns. If you always walk on your tippy toes, right. your body will learn how to do that best, and that becomes your default pattern. That's your most efficient pattern. But does that mean that that is generally the most efficient, best pattern for your body? No. We can correct it and train it. You know, your I body's use always looking for that data. Yes. You're providing your body with that data every single day. Yes. How you do something is how you do everything. It's it's how I pick something up. I, I fall in the default pattern, but guess what? Can I manipulate that pattern? I absolutely can. I can yeah. improve that every single time I go to attempt it. Yeah. I, I use the example of like forward head and I said, you know, the, the muscles that support the neck just through leverage have to support a lot more weight when the head is forward. He said, well, is that necessarily a good or bad thing? I said, well, okay. Here's the problem, first off, with some of these studies. You change someone's posture from less favorable, from more favorable to less favorable, you may not see necessarily more pain or reduce performance necessarily right away. But you follow the law and find me a study that goes five or 10 years, right? This is when it starts to become a problem. Also, it's not just about pain. It's how do you feel performance uh, your energy levels, like these things all uh, play a big role. So, I mean, and I've, I've seen this firsthand myself all the time, but it doesn't make any sense. As you strengthen and train your body, look, athletes all the time train with coaches to change movement patterns. Go, hiring a run, go hire a running coach. They will watch your running pattern and they're not going to say, well, that's your best running pattern. Yes, yeah, so just run harder. <laughs> they're be like, no, 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 there's a, fa there's a faster, more efficient way to run. Yeah. And I know it's awkward for you right now and it's going to take us a while to learn this and get your body used to this. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it because ultimately it's more efficient, it's faster and better performance. How is this message any different than healthy at any size? Exactly. This is the same Very exact true. message and it's so frustrating to me because oh. it's not empowering. It's saying, you know, let's accept just whatever, you know, you're, you're presenting like your health wise is, is it is what it is. So you might as well just be happy. Yes. And of course there's nuance. For example, I'll use a good example, like forward shoulder, right? So forward shoulder is typically regarded as a less favorable posture for your body, it causes more stress on the body. It's not as biomechanically uh, advantageous. It tends to lead to tightness in the upper neck maybe even tightness in the in the upper mid back sometimes shoulder issues because the shoulders don't work as optimally when you're pressing or doing other exercises however is that posture better if you're a boxer it can be you ever watch boxer fight you're not supposed to stand with your chest out you want to have forward shoulder and cover yourself up and i've yeah but now fight. you're talking about performance correct completely different correct that's what i mean by the nuance yes. right so in 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 certain situations some postures can be better than others, but we're talking about general population. And when you see someone, look, I'm not going to take someone with a crazy anterior pelvic tilt and all of a sudden make them have this perfect anatomical. That's not the point, but the point is I'm going to take some pressure off that extreme posture uh, that they have and maybe identify why their posture is that 
particular way. And then look at their movement as a result of that particular posture. It's all connected. Look how much better you look when you stand upright. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that's what, I mean, that's like, <laughs> what, forget all the Tell other things. That doesn't boost your confidence. I, do, you, do you guys remember doing this? I mean, I used to do this as a trainer. I used to, I used to do like this little posture, ch posture check, right. And get my clients into the atomical position and be like, this is this is how we should be moving. Yeah, and, and then I have it stand up in front of the mirror so they could see what they look like. And they right away look like they lost 10 pounds, built some muscle just because they're standing upright with good posture. Yeah. And you can't tell me that doesn't that doesn't also affect mood and attitude. You when you stand up with your chest high, shoulders back, you approach life differently too. So why not work on that just for those reasons too? Forget yeah. all the other shit well, we're talking what's about. What's funny to me is that they've yeah. narrowed it down to posture, but they don't they won't say that about movement. When you talk about movement, the same people are going to say, oh no, there's better or worse movement. Obviously, otherwise exercise form wouldn't exist. Yeah. There wouldn't be exercise form. You just tell someone lift that however you want, whatever feels comfortable to you. <laughs> yeah. And then that's going to be totally fine. Is posture connected to movement? Well, posture is a static hold for some, you know, for, uh, for, for lack of a better term. You're holding your position somewhat in a static position, which means some muscles need to be a little tighter. Some need to be a little bit more relaxed. It's not completely static, right? Nobody stands like a statue, but it's, it's, it's akin to movement. It's really a part of it. So does one affect the other and vice versa? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, these studies that they'll point to, even the studies that they point to show a small change, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's like it, what happens when you're science bound is you take logic yeah. and you throw it out. And you're like, no, 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 this study said that, therefore. Right. What was even the motivation behind the study? Do you know? Uh, I mean, they're trying to look at the effects of exercise on posture and then what that means for pain. Oh, for uh, pain. Yes, for pain for the gotcha. for the person. Uh, you know, I think this is such a trap that a lot of coaches fall into. Totally. Uh, you know, as you get more experienced, more knowledge, uh, you, you quickly begin speaking to your peers more than what you probably originally got into this space for. Yeah. And that's, I always go back to that when I see posts like this from our friends that are really smart guys and girls in the space. Yeah. But at, at one point, they I feel like they start to produce content that is really for the peers. Like what you guys were debating back and forth, the only people that could even hang with that conversation are other coaches and trainers. Mm -hmm. the, the other, you know, I don't how many, I think Eugene's got like 300,000 followers or whatever, right? The other 290,000 followers that are paying attention are completely lost. And they're only picking up on one message. Oh, posture. The, the, waste of time. Yeah, waste of time. Off. Yeah. You're right. So, and so that's, that's the problem that I have is that you, you know, and it, and honestly it would serve them more if they realize this, they realize that you're speaking in a little echo chamber. You see all the comments underneath it too. They're all other coaches that are, you know, supporting with studies also. And yeah. it's like, a, it's a study support session. It's like, and then you're, you you got to think of who, all the clients you trained, all of them. Yeah. How many of them are engaging in that in that conversation? They're not. None. They're coaches. They're other coaches that want to sound smart and that are either going to agree and use studies to support or trainers that want to sound smart and counter his point yes. with other studies. And that, it's just a big jerk dude, off fest. Tell me, yeah. I t uh, tell me, tell me that is not the bane of new trainers. The new smart trainers, that's not one of the biggest weaknesses. Oh, yeah. Is they get stuck in the literature. The minutia. Yeah. You know, I remember getting confronted with this as a trainer myself. I remember having a client, I, you know, I almost fell into this trap. I had a client who he was a, a doctor and he did the Doctors Without Borders. This is where they volunteer their time. They go all over the world and they help, you know, people out or whatever. Very nice guy. I love this guy. He's still a good friend of mine. And he always had some issues with digestion and we couldn't really quite figure it out and energy and otherwise ate healthy, was active, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. So it was just something we couldn't really figure out. Anyway, he traveled somewhere, far corner of the world, lived with a tribe and ate a pretty much vegan diet, okay? Comes back and he goes, I feel amazing. Now, the science says, true, that vegans suffer from higher rates of nutrient deficiencies. We obviously evolved eating meat for exercise performance. The studies will show it tends to be superior, a well-planned omnivore diet versus a well-planned vegan diet, blah, 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 blah. So I was almost like skeptical, but at the end of the day, I had a guy in front of me who says, and I know the guy, and he feels good eating this way, so I said, well, that's weird. You're, you are stronger. You do seem to have better performance. This never happens with any clients I've worked with. Let's follow along and see what happens. And it turns out that he just, his body worked better that way. But if I was science bound, I would have pushed against it and maybe convinced him even to mm -hmm. not listen to his body. 
So that's that's the big point. Here. I feel like I feel like you were because normally you don't engage in that stuff, but I feel like you were extra fired up because we literally just created a program to help people in this direction. <laughs> no. It's top of mind. Yeah, it was. It was just like I feel like that was a shot across the bow right there. Yeah, he didn't even. He, know. he doesn't know, yeah, he right? Doesn't he know. has no yeah. idea that we just created this program called Sym Map Symmetry, and it's literally trying to help people balance out. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well, Map Symmetry does that, but it's you know, it's also well, it's a um, lot more than that. Yeah, but, it's like, uh, but I know that's a component of it, and so. I would but, just think, I mean, look, a lot of our programs, when we create the programs, that's a consideration. We're mm -hmm. always considering how is this going to affect someone's movement and, and, and muscle Especially recruitment. for your average person. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, not not your your super athlete or bodybuilder or somebody that's like a gym rat. Thank like, you. Just like, your average person. Like, you know how many I, DMs I get on the regular? I was literally reading one this morning from people that have taken the advice from us on our Prime Pro and literally just followed that webinar for the last couple of years yeah. and how much it's like changed their life. So right? yeah. Like, oh, Adam, I'm pain-free now. I've never been able to squat this deep. Oh my God, I'm so glad I found you guys. And I felt, it's so crazy to me. It's like, that, that you person- you can't consider antidote. I just feel like okay. that person, yeah. you know, that same type of a person in that same place two, three years ago comes across a post like that that Eugenia did and is now like, oh- well, maybe I shouldn't fuck around and waste my time with that, and then no. Like, and here's the irony, right? Like, could, like it's almost like people think you're there's a there's a, a, a line, and I either create a program that maximizes muscle growth and aesthetics and fat loss, or I create one that makes me move better and feel better, and I have to cho I have to choose. The truth is, the ones that are the most effective long term to build muscle, burn body fat, make you look good, take. Very strong consideration of getting you to move better. Yep. They work together, right? So map symmetry is like that. We created this program. And first off, the goal is to develop a symmetrical, ball balanced physique. So it's the first and only program I've ever seen where unilateral training is the core foundation of the workout. The foundation really is getting the, each side to connect the same, balance things out, create mirror form between right and left, balance the upper and lower body, how to really build a super balanced, aesthetic looking and functional physique through, uh, you know, the, the, the goal of symmetry. That's what the program is really all about. So, well, and again, to kind of, if, if the jab initially was at like a lot of the mobility gurus out there that just stay in, in the body weight yeah. mobility train That's forever, the other extreme. right? Like, uh, you know, this is one of those things where we consider too, like you don't have to be there forever. This is another way you can mobilize the joint, stabilize and control, uh, at, by also like going through loaded exercises. Well, there, there's a, there's a, there is a segment of, of our, you know, coaching space that is exactly that they're super mobility gurus and they want to scare everybody into thinking that from they, doing any strength yeah, yeah like like, you're, like you're, you're compressing the spot what's that one guy that one guy is an example of this um that we used to talk about way back when oh, I know uh, you're functional about. patterns Tried to yeah, get him on and he wouldn't he wouldn't get on a plane it was weird yeah, yeah. like so <laughs> he's he's extreme and, and he has and, some good information but yes he's also another extreme, another right? smart guy with really good information but then just you know is using that same tactic and so I, I can yep. appreciate that point, but again, you're you're talking about a very small segment of people that are probably listening. Well, to hey, proof in the pudding. Map symmetry ends with five, five by, by five, five bilateral Two. barbell strength muscle building. That's the final phase in map symmetry. Yeah. So there's like, your. Proof. What did all this work lead to? Yeah, right. Like, let's now test it. Hey, look, try it out for yourself and see. And then yeah, you'll yeah. be like, oh yeah, the guys know what they're talking about. You know, <laughs> hilarious. Hey, speaking of exercise and stuff. I have to say something that I have noticed that I is different than anything else I've ever noticed in in gyms. Hmm. I've obviously lived in gyms for most of my life. It's actually kind of funny, right? I've been working out in gyms since I was 16. So I've actually been in gyms more than I've have not. And you guys, I know it's very similar. I feel very at home. I mean, you you're probably the one that slept in the gym the most. I yeah. actually <laughs> did. I did when yeah. I when I worked there. I would sleep there a couple of times, but I, um, you know, I grew up there and you notice patterns, just like you guys, like we walk into a gym and we immediately feel comfortable and we see, we know what's happening and it's just, it's just something we're comfortable with. And I notice I'm noticing a very interesting, and I can't speak for every gym. This is just the one I'm going to. This is over at club sport is that I'm seeing more women lift heavy yeah. and properly than men more. Wow. I'm in the free weight area and it's the girls doing the well. Art. Let's let's start by saying that women, I think, all have always uh, trained with better form than men. 
I think that's been because I've always but been never, a, but it's never been dominant in the free weight area for me at least. I've never seen that. I feel like it's we. I mean, we've been watching this happen. You're I mean, right. I mean, it's been a, it's it's well, there's it, less ego in their lifts. That's yeah. True. I mean, coaching. Oh, I've always enjoyed coaching a woman more than coaching a guy. Coaching a guy is always a pain in the Such ass. A hard they're, they're, yeah, it's yeah. hard for them to get out of their own way. Where like a, a most of my female clients, they would focus first on form and then I would be the one to be pushing them weight. Guys would be the reverse. Guys like I let's, do more. let's do more. Yeah. yeah let's put more they're like, Whoa, wait, let's focus let's on form for a little bit. This first. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that for the most part, you know, women women I think personally uh tend to have better form. Uh well it, it's not just that. It's that for so long the fear of building too much muscle, being too big, right? Kind of kept women out. And so they were usually dominate the cardio area. But I mean, you know how in club sport there's that downstairs like functional power lifting. They got the platforms. They have a yeah, reverse grass. hyper. They got mm -hmm. the grass. So I'm in there and there's, I, there's literally, I think there's like two or three guys and like six women. And I'm, I mean, varying ages, like, you know, middle-aged down to in their twenties, you know, and there was even a woman who looked like she was in her fifties and the women were doing like bench press, but not like just bench press, like feet planted, back arch, shoulders back, power lifting style bench press. Military presses. I saw barbell rows. I saw one arm Arnold presses. Meanwhile, I see the dudes doing like, you know, swinging curls and like, <laughs> you know, cable weird shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Then I go upstairs and it's the same. I see similar stuff. The cage, there were two women in there front squatting, front squatting across wow. their shoulder. And I'm like, this is incredible. Like, has the, has word, the revolution spread? Started? Yeah. This is so amazing. Yeah, it does feel. I like haven't it's been, been in the gym in a while, so that's interesting. Oh, dude. It yeah, was how's rad. that been for you? Because you're the you're the first one to go back. I love it. You know what I love about it? I love working out in my garage too. I just can't because I work out at six and I'd end up waking the baby because he's right upstairs. I should have freaking planned it better and picked a different place to live in. I swear <laughs> to God. So anyway, um, you need a shed outside or dude, something. Dude. I need a separate. I do. I swear yeah. to God. One day my dream Build house. A, I'm yeah. gonna have a gym shed. A gym on the property and it's gonna be ridiculous and scary. No one's gonna go in there but me. But anyway, um, I love it because of the uh, the steam room and the sauna and because they have so many machines and I never use machines that I'm going through an entire cycle of just straight up bodybuilding machine work, really give my joints a little bit of a break. It also encourages me to go lighter. I have a tendency to try to push it a little a little hard with the weight, uh -huh. but when I'm using machines, I don't, it's, I'm much more likely to go light and feel that stuff. So it's just different. It's very novel for my body. So I think I'll be doing this for the next few months and then probably go back to how I train traditionally. You know what else they have? They, I, I said earlier, reverse hyper. When's the last time you guys used oh, a reverse hyper? I love hyper? the reverse hyper. That was one I, I used to do uh, consistently when I was at NorCal because they actually had one. I was going to buy it for my house when I was, was experiencing a lot of back pain because it's another great the way. The best. Yeah, to, to build up strength support there for your lower back. Oh, it's the uh, best. I mean, I was doing it, and I could feel how I have to articulate my spine a little better and isolate my hips, mm -hmm. and it was it's hard for me. I'm not even able to use much resistance, and I'm like, Louis this Simmons, is didn't he uh, invent it? He did. Uh, rest in peace. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Did he invent it? Yeah, dude. Yeah. He did so oh, wow. much that I was like I, going through, you know, after he passed, like just seeing his impact was like enormous. Oh, his impact on strength training was just, that guy was a character. You yeah. guys know he was at 74, 75 when he died? Oh, really? He was, he's been, still squatting like crazy. Bro, weight. he yeah. was using an, high, low, high dose to his own admissions of anabolic steroids since he was 20 or something like that. Yeah. So he made it till he was 75. With all, <laughs> you know, that's just a testament to exercise. That must have offset all the other shit to keep him alive that long. What you know was what the mean? cause? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what he died of. You you, have to look did you that read up. that, Doug? Did you? I saw everyone posting about it the other yeah, last week or whatever yeah, it was. Well, huge cost. impact on the, uh, you know, strength sport and this, you know, powerlifting yeah. and stuff like that. Well, so. right before we got on air, we were actually having an interesting conversation. That I wanted to finish, and we got interrupted. Is that you don't? Uh, you don't want to be a billionaire. You, you no, <laughs> you, so uh, we're <laughs> too much. Just and I were divvying yeah. uh, divvying out your money already. That when you get to a place where yeah. you, start, we'll, we'll start the Adam funds. You know yeah, what, you dude? Be it, it, being a billionaire comes with so much uh, scrutiny and uh, pressure, both politically and people just look to you differently that I don't know if I'd want that. And I don't know if your lifestyle, I, okay, maybe maybe other people. My lifestyle wouldn't be different if I had a hundred million versus a billion. I don't know what the hell I'd buy or do with a billion. Well, I don't that disagree with different. that. Well, what you, about like, okay, so if you had to pick one, obviously you're going to pick Elon Musk, but like, uh, you know, like a Richard Branson or like yeah. somebody else that's like doing cool shit with it. Yeah. 
Like, who would you pick? To, like, I don't know. I mean, what cool shit? I don't know what cool shit. What would I do? You guys know me. What well, the, the fuck the, would the, I do? The, I'm the in the funny space part race. You say Dude, that I love is it. because I know that you you are you out of all of us. You're the one that wants to start a a charity or a nonprofit. That, that's appealing sooner than than yeah. the rest of us. And I mean, from what I've heard, okay, because I I don't know a lot of billionaires, but when you reach that level. It no longer becomes about making money. You have so much money that you're taking care of, your family's taking care of. Now it's really what, what kind of impact can you make in the world? Yeah, I guess and so. I kind of feel like that's right in your wheelhouse of, I mean, how great yeah. would that be? You, you can that do big things. All you yeah, think about wide, is yeah. like, how can I really, you know, leave a mark and really change? No, you're right. And so I think that 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 frees that up when you're at that well, we level. We want yeah. good people to have that kind of influence, you know, like that kind of power. And you know, I think that's why like Elon Musk like has really shown, you know, like some of his latest moves has been like, wow, you can do cool things, you know, with that kind you of. You know, this, this is why I really like that. And I wish I would watch the undercover billionaire because it. it you know, there's this like idea of like billionaires are these, you know, money hungry assholes, like yeah, super, if they had privilege that people just gave them that. Money. Yeah, yeah. And you want, I mean, I can't help but notice that uh, now they, uh, sometimes you'll see that they're ultra confident and sometimes people will re receive that as cocky and arrogant and stuff like that. But then you watch them interact with people. I know it's a show, whatever, but I mean, like you still see some things that, you know, Nobody is coaching them to talk that way or interact they have with disciplines these. and characteristics. Yes. That you're just like, wow, I see why you're so yes. successful. Yes. Yeah. And and they're they're admirable. No, it's true. And and it's, true. it's like they just they don't get highlighted because we're 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 right now we have this weird time. I feel like, you know, they maybe maybe billionaires and millionaires were celebrated uh, two decades ago or something, but we're now they're not. It's like it's, it's like weird. shameful. It's like shameful to it, be that. Yeah, wealthy. it doesn't make yeah. it. If, if you made your millions or your billions through the market, it means you've produced something that people value enough mm -hmm. uh, that they've voluntarily given you their money. So you've actually provided a tremendous amount of value to a lot of people, and that's that's for the most part commendable. Now I know sometimes what people want can be distractions and alcohol and shit. I get that. So I'm not trying to be too general. I'm not trying to say that's perfect. But nonetheless, for the most part, you've produced something of so much value to so many people that they've said, please take my money. What you've done is so valuable that I I want to do this. I mean, that's a that's a for the most part, that's good. That's mm -hmm. what you want. So uh no, I I I I agree. And what you said it's interesting. I had a uh, conversation with Jessica about this last night. Uh exactly this conversation. And I found, um, I wrote this a long time ago about this nonprofit that I wanted to do. And it was a big, this was an idea I had for a long time. I forgot all about it. And it was that I would, I wanted to figure out a way to connect coaches and trainers with people who are either going through cancer treatment or who survived uh, and have beat cancer because I, I had a personal connection to that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to figure out some kind of a charity or something. I actually wrote out, I remember writing this out where, coaches and trainers can be connected to people to help them through exercise rehab mm. and the value that that would bring. And it was just something that was, you know, personal to me. I don't know what that would look like. Arthur Brooks did say though, that he helps people create um, nonprofits. So I'm going to talk to him and see what the hell, because I have no idea. It feels like such that. a complicated thing. I, lo I love Arthur Brooks. I mean, he's, I, mean, I know he doesn't talk about economics as much, but he's an economist and, and one of my favorite economists next to my other one, which is Peter Lineman, who I listen to. Yeah. So you're saying he's saying that there's no recession coming. We're going to crush. Well, no, 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 no. He didn't say that. Oh, he did. No, 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 no. He didn't say that. He's just very bullish about the economy right now and, and in the next couple of years. Oh, really? really? Yeah. No, he's just, he, he thinks that it's going to, we're going to continue to see uh, prosperity right now and his his logic behind that is what the gdp has grown over you know year over year over year for so long and that we from that lockdown it you know basically took it to a screeching halt and right now we're trending like it, on average i think it's 2.5 percent gdp growth year yeah, over yeah. year and after we had that huge surge right now of like 3.5 percent or what that and he just and he goes but when you look at that over the course of three years we're actually already a little lower than average and he goes to average that back out you're going to see it you're going to see it continue staying in this he thinks in this kind of three three and a half percent until it levels back down in the in the two oh, and a half percent I see what you're saying. and of course there will be a like quote unquote mini recession to bring it back down to that two point two point five or you know two percent but so he doesn't think it's going to go down below where we were before everything else. 
I mean, yeah, based off of the if you could, if we were to continue to grow GDP by three and a half percent the next two years, that even if we took a dive, we would still be. Was ahead he of, taking into account, or did he did he comment? His, on? It, supply and demand is what he he's like. It's it, instead of getting over, get, making it too complex. He's like it's it's just as simple as supply and demand, and mm. and add in when you infuse that much money, and we still. His his theory is that we have not even come close to seeing the effects of all that money. So does he think there's going to be more inflation then? Too? Well, so yes, and but the Fed will try and tamp that down by oh. increasing rates. Did he bring up uh, the 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 people are talking about potential food shortages coming up because of the war? In well, Ukraine? that's all part of what's driving the inflation. That's also okay. the, I mean the, the demand is so high. Everybody still wants all that, and so until. Until we have a, a, a supply that right. is the supply going, has been lacking substantially. I hate you know what I, I hate about up. what I hate about this is that uh, like you tend to want to believe the person that makes you feel better about your own beliefs. Sure. I know I find myself doing that. Yeah, I remember clearly. We we all remember the two thousand eight crash it was one of the big. It was the what do they call it the Great Recession, right? And everybody panicked, and it was it was pretty bad for a lot of people. I remember literally. The year before, or even the months leading into it, people were like, "This is—it's never going to go down. We're crushing this." There was who was it? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the it was the, the the Fed chairman at the time. Yeah, you talk literally like six months before. No, there's no indications of any issues. It's going to continue to grow. I mean, I intentionally listen to both sides, right? I'm yeah. I'm always seeking out somebody it. who's like the. I mean, I've been listening to this one guy who's been you know yelling like we're going to see 08 crash or worse. Like, oh, no. And I like him. He's got a lot of good information, and so but I intentionally listen to him because he's on the other extreme. Does he know one of those that sells gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They he, and do, he does, yeah. no, he this one doesn't. But yeah, I know Peter Schiff is very much so like Schiff's the, big on gold. gold the, the sky is falling. Yeah. You know what's interesting about the last recession that that we had was. Um, in 2012 was a, a record time for affordability for houses. Of course. In 2012. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I still wouldn't have thought that. You're talking about over the last 20, 30 years or like that. I thought that was really interesting. There were 79% of uh, United States homeowner or people that could buy homes, right, could afford homes at, at that time. You know what's funny about that? After 08, I remember also seeing this being in the Bay Area. House prices crashed everywhere. Including the Bay Area, um, always of course the Bay Area is more expensive than most places, but they did drop quite a bit. I remember people, smart people, coming in and buying everything, buying everything. I remember being like, "But everything's crashing." Obviously, they were smart because everything not only did it come back, but it went back. Well, I think that's how he—that's his theory too of how the 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 money is going to come out, right? Because we we still have after I don't know how many trillions of dollars that we we um, printed, but. Uh, we haven't spent all of that, and there's a lot of people that are track. waiting for that correction or that little mini recession to happen, which is, you know, his in his theory is 60 to 90 day. We'll see that, and then you're gonna all you're gonna see is these people aggressively start buying again, especially when you look at where the interest rates are. Mm. I mean, it's gonna be we're at four right now. It's gonna you know at the end of this year it'll probably be four and a half, maybe five at the highest. Um, it's still it's still I, low. I, when I bought my first house, my I had a had a two out an eighty twenty split loan, was and it, it was 8%? nine and thirteen yeah, percent. So an average of eleven percent. Do you know yeah. how high interest rates were when the in the eighties when yeah eighties was crazy inflation? like fifteen seventeen yeah, percent uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know you, you have the and that's how pe most people look at it like that their payment you know can I afford this they don't think of like oh the house is two hundred thousand dollars more it's yeah. like can I afford this monthly payment and I already told you guys I think the other thing they're going to do to stimulate the economy is going to be to do the forty year mortgage, mortgage. Yeah. mortgage so yeah. as so. You know, there's there is That's parts of me coming. that that believe. I know we have we have slowed down dramatically, and I, I do think a correction is coming. I think there. I think we're going to see it at the end of this year and the next year. But after listening to Linneman, I was just really surprised how how bullish he was. Still, wow. I mean, he, his thing that he says is like, I wouldn't bet against the U.S. economy. Mm. I wouldn't have. You know, everybody well, said how he like if I would have told you all the things that happened. You know, in, in 2019 or 2020. All that was gonna happen, and where we would be at right now with things, would you have predicted that? No. It was like hell, no. Right. Nobody would have. No, yeah. nobody would have thought uh, that. Speaking of demand, I think I created some demand for Caldera today at the gym. So I was. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, so quick question: What are appropriate things that guys can compliment you on, and what are things that feel weird when you get complimented on by a guy? You're looking jacked. Like I'll take that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's right. All right, yeah. right. But that's that's like appropriate. A specific body part that gets a little weird. Yeah, like yeah. you have really nice uh, hamstrings. Yeah, like kind of weird. Your glutes are real big now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm in there right. I finished down. I finished steam, and there's this older guy that that's and he's very talkative, nice dude. Um, so if I see him, he you know we bullshit a little bit, 
and I'm done with the steam. I come out and you know I take my cold shower, and then I'm sitting in front of the mirror with my towel around me, and I, I you know I have my caldera out, and I'm gonna put the oil on my skin. So I take it out, open it, put some on my skin, rub it in. He goes, huh? What's that? I said, oh, it's this you know face serum or whatever. It's really good. He goes, that's why you have. <laughs> I'm such, a big serum guy. He goes, that's He's... why you have such nice skin. He goes, you know, I was thinking that like you've got really nice skin. I'm like, oh, I feel uncomfortable a little bit <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know the guy. Like, you, you know start I mean? bringing it in your gym bag and hustling, uh, bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 Start, start, start slinging, slinging yeah, it. Yeah. 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 No, so he asked to see Old the bottle. You bring your that. trench coat. Dude. No, he yeah. asked to see the bottle, and I showed him the bottle, and we started talking about it. And I'm like, no, it works really well. I said my skin's oily, but it actually balances it out. And I said I have friends with dry skin; it works really well. But I remember feeling weird, like because he goes, you know, it's it's different, right? He goes, man, your arms are it's big. So like, nice. Can I touch it? Yeah, I'm like, thanks, thanks, thanks for the. Okay. He's like, I, yeah, I've been noticing your skin. You've got really nice skin. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Come on, dude. Well, I was gonna compliment <laughs> Adam's like beard, super shiny. I don't know if you've been. Uh, doing do you put it, it in your beard? Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I love to put it in my beard. Wow. Too. Yeah. I no just wonder. I, I do the whole thing. You know, it's yeah. like like glistening. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Look at that. Glisten all over your body. Is well, <laughs> that from? Not you know that's from? Uncomfortable. That's no. uh, no. is it coming to America? Oh, is that what's water glisten all over your body? Oh, no. You know what is that from? Is that that soul glow? Uh, I, that's I really, my favorite. I love dude. that dude. when they had this yeah. soul glow in their hair. And they like, that soul glow. Man, that's gonna drive me crazy. City. What is yeah. that from? I, I, I think it's coming to America. It might be. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. 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 No, the soul glow one's funny because then they're all sitting up against the wall and they come off and there's <laughs> an oil just a stain. There's like an oil a... slick on there, oh, man. which is hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got some cool studies to to share with you guys. Oh, but you have to talk about the alien UFO recent. Uh, stuff. Oh too. shit! Have you seen that before that? Well, I saw the Joe Rogan post, but I didn't go. I'm not like you guys, where you guys see that stuff. And get so there's all a Freedom of Information Act. Read that four passed. hours of articles there's around a, UFOs. There's, so there's something called the Freedom. Somebody's got to pay attention, Adam. Yeah, no, I appreciate. It. I'm yeah. not. That's not me well, shaming you it, at all. It just goes yeah. to show you how crazy times are. With news comes out like this, and it's like on the. I'll worry page. about the economy for us. So we don't go broke. Yeah, exactly. You guys, you, you guys keep me informed you on keep the, the UFOs. Pulse we'll, there. <laughs> we'll keep the pulse on the alien invasion. Okay, like thank us later. Save your money. The aliens are coming. Okay, you got to. Speaking of aliens coming, I heard that. um you know, there there's reports of being pregnant. That's part of it. What? So Freedom of Information Act is an act that passed that uh, that requires classified information to be to be released after a certain period of time. So some of this information got released. And these are reports of people getting brain damage, um, having uh, uh, unexplained uh, impregnant, uh, being pregnant, unexplained. And there was something else. Immaculate skin burns. Radi- yeah. Radiation, so naturally skin burns. aliens. Is that how we go there? Default. Like, <laughs> what, but yeah, I know. That's the funny part. Like, I wonder if some some woman's like, she cheated on her husband. Yeah, yeah, She's like, yeah. what the fuck do yeah, I de- say? Deny, deny, there deny. Was a, there, yeah. Yeah. there was this light. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I was pregnant. I already lied about the first one and said it was God giving me. I, I, what do I say with the second one? No, Wait but, a minute. I think they probe you anally. Yeah. Like, what are yeah. we talking about here? Yeah, that's, yeah. see, that's what I say. Yeah. It's anal probing. Okay, so tell, me, okay so tell me more about this. So they. These are reports. First that of get all, I, I actually didn't know that. So. Huh? There, I didn't, didn't know what the Freedom Act. You said what'd you? Oh, oh, Freedom of Information Act. Freedom of Inf- so is that is that relatively new? I didn't know that. I didn't know we had. No, that. they passed that. No, uh, yeah. I want to say ten years ago. I don't know if Doug can look it up. That's maybe. how we get all this crazy information uh, from like the well, okay, so FBI, CIA, like like all these like. That's programs why I was ran. wondering why all of a sudden this stuff is servicing. I was like, why are we all of a sudden? You know, I'm always thinking like, okay, what's the what what's cover? the desired outcome here or distraction or whatever with that, but. I didn't know this was in place where they they have to release. And is it just like a certain time frame? Yeah, is it after yeah. like ten years? What does it or say, something? Doug? Nineteen sixty six. That's when it came out. Yep. Oh shit! I so it's like that fifty old. years then. Then is it fifty? So, so fifty five years. Let's, Every fifty five. So at 55, no, no, no. I mean, it said it's fifty five years ago. Okay. Does uh, it say how long, like, yeah, uh, how do, before you're able to then, as public, be able to read? Any, okay, so it says documents. Any, any person has a right enforceable in court to obtain access to federal agency records except to the extent that such records are protected from public disclosure by one of nine exemptions. Okay. So this is why sometimes you'll get a freedom. That sounds fishy. You'll get a Freedom of Information yeah. Act re, uh, like report. You ever seen these reports that come out? This was just released and like everything's blacked out yeah, yeah. except for like a few words. Like, yeah. well, that's, well, thanks. So, okay, wait, it has to be in court. It's not like, I mean, is that? Yeah, I think you have to request it. Like I want to see this or I want to see that. I don't know. It was that old? I thought it was something that was a little uh, it was newer. Well, anyway, these are reports of people that they investigated and they couldn't explain it. Well, yeah, they had radiation burns. We don't know how the oh, hell yeah. they got radiation burns. Yeah, you know, or yeah, this brain damage, you know, start happening. It's unexplained. We don't know. 
Aliens, though? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but they said it was aliens. I don't know. It's fun to think, but yeah. yeah All right. Fishy. Back to, back to yeah. cool uh, studies. They're coming out with uh, drug-releasing contact lenses. Drug-releasing. Con- so like drips in your eye? Yeah, for oh. allergies. So people will put these contact Bro, lenses on. Bro, my allergies on. are killing me today. I know. You got excited oh. for that. So you put these contact lenses on, and it's anti-allergy directly in your eye. And of course, the technology is they're looking at more potential applications for these particular types of contact lenses. So Isn't that fascinating? Releases? Like it's a time release? Like, Something like that. I don't weird. know how this technology works, but yeah. that's right. That's, that's Sounds that's, crazy. Is there yeah. good absorption through the eye? Is that like an uh, like organ that's really good for like absorbing nutrients? For eye or? allergies, yes. I don't know how they would deliver other drugs that way. But which and Now, speaking of which... There's also- I haven't started thinking about cocaine contacts. <laughs> well, isn't LSD sometimes put in the eye? That's oh, yeah, good, you're right. I didn't know eye that. Drops. That's, that's yeah. true. I remember seeing that in a movie. Not Is that it? I've do, ever done that. I've never done that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah I've heard they call that. you the eagle. Sure, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah Doug, <laughs> Doug's never done that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, um, no, that's very interesting. That's true. So I bet you could- Is that-, could, is that they, they would drop it in the eye? You could. Mm-hmm. I remember watching a movie where someone did that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone, a friend told you also, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, <you> no. <laughs> First so all, innocent, that's you too. All it takes. First yeah. of all, if I ever- I heard. If I ever I tried heard. a psychedelic, the last thing I would do is, is, is do it in a weird way. I'd be like, it's already, I'm already scared. I'm not going to do it in a weird way. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm already yeah. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. There's, other, there's some other sciences coming out where they're starting to develop drugs where, the, where they will test your DNA to find the most efficacious combination or types of drugs for your body. Because- there are certain instances where some drugs, which work very well for some people, can cause adverse effects in other people or no effects. For example, pain relievers like codeine don't work in about 5% of the population at all. So yeah. they have to find, and, and the only way you know is if you test it. Or like a higher amount. Like I know for redheads, like in terms of like pain medication, it's, uh, you got to like double the dose that, almost. Katrina, that's true. You know what Katrina says? She claims that she gets nothing but nightmares from that. Opiates? Yeah. Me neither. Really? Same thing. Yeah. She's like, I don't feel any pain relief at all, and all I get is nightmares. Yep. Wow, that's... Isn't that weird? Look at this. But she's not the first person I've heard say that. I've heard other people say the same thing, too. Now, look at this. The genetic code... Here's another one. So, the the genetic code of one in 500 people puts them at a high risk of losing their hearing if they take particular types of antibiotics. But the only way to know is if you give them the antibiotic. So, what what they're trying to develop are DNA tests... That will help them identify so that they don't have these types of accidents. Here's another one. Uh, five to seven percent of people would have a bad reaction to a particular HIV drug. Some have actually died because of it. Wow. So this is phenomenal science where they'll be able to test your DNA. Because, you know, one of the challenges with lots of drugs, especially drugs that affect the, the psyche, like antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, you talk to anybody who's had to go through the process of finding the right anti-psychotic or anti-anxiety mm-hmm. or, you know, basically drugs that help that affect the, the, the psyche. It's and they'll tell you, and error. they'll tell you it took me two or three years to find the right combination. Yeah. I've and heard it's, that. it's all trial and error. Like imagine if we could erase that long period of shitty combinations where, Oh, I felt like a zombie. Oh my God. I felt like killing myself. Like these are, I have a lot stories. of pain actually here. Here's some nightmares. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks doc. Like, what the fuck? That's exactly yeah, what that's happens crazy. to me with that. So I, I have a, I have a confession. Um, Uh-oh. and I, and our, our partners over at live on labs will appreciate this. Uh, so I, I thought I had tried them all. I obviously had not because I asked you the other day about the uptake on creatine. And is that what it is? The, the alpha lipoic acid, Helps speed up the uptake or Increases, absorb more. Yes, is, you 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 will absorb more uh, creatine when you take alpha lipoic acid with it, which is great because the other way to do it would be to take a bunch of sugar. So instead of taking a bunch of sugar, you could use alpha lipoic acid. Yeah, so I used it yesterday uh, after my workout, and it actually tastes good. I know oh, it's the only one. Why? Not, yeah, why is that one taste good and all the rest of them no not? sulfur? Uh, uh, because it, some things taste good and th- some things taste bad. They don't. They don't go. Well, no, in, consistently, the other ones are not good as because far as tasting. Because their goal isn't to make a taste. I know that. I'm, that's why I say it tastes like it works. So well, that's, that's a, that should be their tagline. Tastes like it works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's efficacious. Right? But th- this one actually tastes good. I thought there was something in it special that made it taste like that. I don't know what, what it, what's in alpha lipoic acid. That's I think it's well. They they might add a little something, but I think it's the alpha. 
buffalo pulic acid itself that tastes, tastes mild. So. It has a taste that it's, uh, it, what else would you find that in? Is there an inning where we would find that I in something? Know. Because it has a taste that I recognize. Like, what, where have I had this before? <laughs> I was going to make a bad joke. <laughs> this is, this is, Please don't. Save it. Save it. <laughs> like, you don't want to know where this comes from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Wow. I'm, I'm, did that I did There's not. a high amount of alpha pulic acid I actually have no idea what it tastes like. I didn't know you were that much into whales. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Whale semen contains yeah, a lot exactly. of alpha lipoic acid. That's Adam, where I was going very strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, another supplement that they have is their L carnitine. Yeah, acetyl L carnitine. Now that's traditionally in pre workouts. Yeah, and it, what uh, one of my favorite things about that is it increases androgen receptor density. All right, what does that mean? Your androgen receptors are what your testosterone attached to, and studies have actually shown that androgen receptor density has a much higher impact on your ability to build muscle and strength than your testosterone levels do. They actually did a big study where they took a bunch of men who didn't have extreme levels of low levels of testosterone. So it was like, you know, somewhere in the middle, but there was a range between like, you know, low middle to high. And they wanted to see if those testosterone levels were correlated to strength and muscle gain. They also tested them all for androgen receptor density. Yeah. Androgen receptor density was a far better predictor. Oh, I remember when Dr. Rand shared this. Mm. Right, he told you that, didn't he? He you, did originally. Yeah, he said that to me actually because uh, of how you know I had a lot of side effects from low testosterone, but some didn't. I didn't have that big of a side effect. Um, and he said, "Well, you might have more and androgen receptor density in your body." Um, so so your it, testosterone. So anyway, supplementing with it will increase your androgen receptor density, thus making your whatever your testosterone is more effective. So if I'm taking that synthetically right now, is there is there is it still valuable for me to use that? What do you mean? Would it be still testosterone? No, yeah. Well, I'm taking testosterone. Oh, right? yeah. So is it still valuable? Yes. To, oh, okay. Yes. So whatever you're using will be more effective, right? If we can increase your androgen receptor density by 10%, your, uh, I mean, for lack of, I guess this is very general, but uh, essentially you're going to have 10% more. And that's the L carnitine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, L carnitine does that. So I yeah. should have done that all together. Yeah. Speaking of you which, you probably could have told me that one. Speaking I was of which, it, so as of the nice. airing of this episode, <laughs> yeah. just holding information. Doug, as of the airing of this episode, when's the next live like Q and A in our hormone forum? Is it tomorrow? That is correct. Yeah. Okay, so we drop this episode tomorrow. You can go on Facebook, and it's is it Mind Pump Hormones? Yes. Uh, yes. yes, Mind yes. Pump Hormones on Facebook. Okay, yes. so it's a group. It's not private. Anybody can join. We got Dr. Todd in there. And then Dr. Right? Todd goes in there and answers whatever questions people have about hormones or about hormone replacement therapy or about peptides. And this is the company that we work with. He's one of the doctors there. And if you want like a consultation, well, they'll go through and do all the tests. That's that's different. That's mphormones.com. Uh, right. So that's April 13th at 5 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. Pacific. Thanks, Doug. I didn't say oh. that time. Awesome. How long is it? When is our, when's the, the launch for our program end? Yeah, on Sunday, this coming Sunday. Oh, okay. right. So right now, Map Symmetry, brand new program. You can get it. Uh, so it'll retail for one seventy seven, and the sale price is a lot less, right? Ninety seven bucks. Ninety seven yeah. bucks. But you so you get it for ninety seven, and then what you also get included for free are uh, the reverse dieting one hundred and one ebook, which we're going to sell for forty seven, but that's free, and then an isometrics ebook, which will also sell for forty seven, but you're going to get that for free. So ninety seven, you get map symmetry. And those two ebooks uh, included, and it's all at mapssymmetry.com. So there's two S's in the middle. And is there a code or is that going to be? Yes, the, it's SYM50. SYM50. And, and this is the Sunday. first time that we've ever done a launch like this where we've given away this much stuff. So, and the, the, those two books are fire. Oh, they're great. Absolutely. They're fire. legit book. They're yeah. legit. They're not like, you know, Stand one or two alone. pages. Yeah. yeah. No, no, they're ebooks by themselves. So, hey, real quick, check this out. Uh, Cannabinoids have some pretty interesting effects in the body. I love taking cannabinoids to feel relaxed, uplifted, sometimes inspired. There's also anti-inflammatory effects. But a lot of products on the market are garbage. A lot of CBD products in particular. Not Ned. Ned is full-spectrum hemp oil. You can really feel, okay? So if you've taken CBD and not noticed a difference, try Ned's hemp oil. You take it and you can really feel it. And they have different types of products. Some of them are specifically for sleep, so it's high in CBN and other botanicals. And then they have a general hemp oil extract product that you could take during the day. Again, it's the only hemp oil product that's high in CBD and other cannabinoids that I can actually feel. The other stuff I can't even tell. Go check these guys out. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on NED, that's the company, N-E-D, and then use the code MINDPUMP for 15% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Tim from Illinois. What's up, Tim? How can we help you? 
Hey guys, it's kind of kind of weird to talk to you. I feel like I know you, but I never met you. That's got to be weird for you guys too. <laughs> a little bit. But uh, so uh, I'm calling because uh, over the last year I've decided to change my training up a little bit. I'm 51. Um, I've been training six days a week religiously for the last five to six years. The first couple of that were conjugate training, and I've been doing maps programs for the last probably three years. Um, I started training because of a chronic pain condition. And it turns out, oddly enough, that resistance training was the only thing that helped me. Wow. Um, so now I've gone from being sedentary, overweight, not active to being extraordinarily active. So the reason I want to change my training is um, over the winter, uh, I decided to really double down and just dial everything in strength training wise. So I did an abbreviated version of anabolic, an abbreviated version of performance, and I've got a week and a half left in aesthetic. And the summertime, I find myself now so busy with activity that I just want to do the least possible weight training over the next six months to not lose anything. And I know I hear Sal, you talk about, you know, it's, it's hard to put on muscle, but it's easy to maintain. And then I hear Adam talk about, you know, what's the least amount of input to, to elicit the greatest amount of response. And I'm wondering how you put those two things together to kind of just maintain my strength over the next six months. And for me, I really want to strength train every, you know, six days a week. I already start my day with mobility. I start with like 15 minutes with Prime Pro and then about a 45 minute walk with my dog. But it's just been so life changing for me. I want to do it. I don't know what I need to do. What I do know is I should never program for myself. So <laughs> it'll become, it'll become, you know, two maps programs stacked on top of each other if I do it for myself. So I'm kind of wondering what your input is on a kind of a maintenance plan for the next six months. Well, I think we need to first reconcile your, so it sounds like you, you really want to still train six days a week though. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, you, you said so the summer months you want to work out less, like, or you do. You yeah. So I want to be able to, you know, what I was thinking is maybe like if I went in and did some, you know, did like. 15 minutes of sled work and then 15 minutes of uh, farmer's carries. Or if I did, you know, 20 oh. or 30 minutes of kettlebell work. Every day. Oh, okay. So okay. enough to touch it. And I don't want to jump back in next winter and have lost a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. oh, I see. So you want to go to the gym six days a week. You just want to be able to do less, way less. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The gym's in my garage. So that's, a, I wouldn't, I would no more skip the gym than I would skip showering and brushing my teeth. So it's just a part of my day. Love that. I love oh, that. Oh yeah, dude. Hey, you I, can, we can have some fun here. Yeah. 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 This is where we can get into yeah. some skills training and some, uh, you know, some unique, uh, lifts too. We talk about like Turkish get us. We talk about, um, you know, windmills and uh, some of these unique lifts that like a lot of people don't ever incorporate. This is a perfect time. That's to focus totally on that. what went through my head. It was, you're on the exact same page as I am. Justin is I'm, I'm envisioning like a maps anabolic type of routine. And then the other three days that you're coming to the gym, uh, it's maybe some trigger session with like a movement and like that movement be Turkish get up one day, another day it's farmer carries. Uh, I, then it sounds like you were already kind of thinking in this direction. And I love that. Well, yeah. I wanted to maybe not, because I, I did look at maybe taking like a MAPS anabolic and just splitting it up so I could just do a portion of the, because I don't, I'm so busy in the summertime. I literally, I'm putting in 10 to 15 miles a day. I'm hiking, I'm climbing, I'm disc golfing, I'm golf, I'm doing lots of stuff. Yeah. So I, I want to cut down the time as much as possible. So if I could get, you know, if I maybe split anabolic into, you know, six different sessions and not do trigger sessions. or I, I love that too. Sure. I do that. I do that right now. That's a, a, very similar to how I train right now is I follow a MAPS anabolic type protocol. Like last week I trained um, five days, but what I did was I took the three days of training of anabolic and kind of just dispersed it over those five days. So, okay. yeah, I mean, the, 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 the cool part about this is that, there's a lot of different options that you can do, and it's really kind of uh, what I think that you enjoy the most. That's most important. I love the fact that um, you've you've made working out in your garage a you know like brushing your teeth or showering. And I never want to tell a client who's built that uh, system like that for themselves and consistency to say, hey, you should really take yeah. you know three days off and mm -hmm. stop working out. Like, no, awesome. Just let's modify what it looks like and your idea of splitting anabolic is totally cool your idea of just doing maybe farmer carries i mean they're they're neither one of them are wrong answers yeah tim you know the they've done studies on this and they'll show that it's like one ninth the volume is required to maintain strength and muscle that, that it took to build it was one ninth or one seventh it's, it's, could i even cut down the number of sets in in anabolic to make it even shorter just like i said because i want to touch you know touch it as little as possible but still maintain you know really, what i would really, i always overdo things yeah so what i what i would I won't do it right. what i would do if i were you is i would i would do one or two exercises every day that's it mm -hmm. now if, if you're more functional focused during that period of time 
You can make it more of a functional movement. You mentioned the sled. That would be one of them, for example. But a couple exercises for a few sets, six days a week would be perfect mm -hmm. in perfect. combination with everything else that you're doing. And, you know, pick the movements that feel the best. Obviously, the compound lifts are going to have a lot of carryover. But if you're really sore from hiking or climbing or you know you have a big climb that day, then I would be more kind of mobility work that day. Have fun with it. Honestly, you've been working out for long enough now to where I think if you give yourself the 30 minute time limit to pick like two or three movements and you leave it up to whichever ones you feel are going to feel best for you, you're, it's going to be hard to go, go wrong with that. Oh man. You, there's so much okay. opportunity. I feel like to, you know, really work on sharpening your kettlebell swing, doing, you know, kettlebell snatches, like getting into mace bell training. There's just like other lots of things people don't ever consider. This is, you know, one of those things that I do it all the time just to keep my body functioning and moving properly and strength driven, um, but not always overloading it and giving it some time, you know, away from just like, you know, beating the crap out of it all the time. So uh, I would try and really expand your mind in, in terms of like, you know, learning a new skill that you can then bring with you coming back. Yeah. And Tim, consider this. You've heard, you've heard us talk to athletes, right? About uh, off season training versus in season training. For sure. Very similar to what you're doing. So off season, you've already done that. Now you're in season, you're going to be climbing, you're going to be hiking, you're going to be, you know, doing lots of, uh, of, of hike, walking and lots and lots of activity. Your workouts now should be really to prevent injury and maintain mobility. Don't do the workouts to improve performance because that's otherwise you'll push yourself a little too hard and your chance or risk of injury will go up. So 30 minutes of what's going to make my body perform better for the important stuff, which is all the other stuff that you listed uh, that you do during the summer. And then when you go back to winter training, you're going to crush. Perfect. No, that's, that's good news. Cause I, I, uh, I make Derek Rose look bulletproof. So I injure <laughs> real easily. So uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good to hear that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's great advice. I really appreciate it. Uh, Tim, Tim, while we have you, why don't, why don't you uh, let the audience know where, where you, you have a blog you're, uh, for the audience. If they don't know we, you were, this is the first time we've actually formally met here is, uh, you're our best affiliate that we have out there. You write all kinds of great articles around our programming. And obviously you've, you've got a lot of experience in them. Uh, why don't you give a shout out to uh, where to find you? Oh, thanks, man. It's uh, it's jimcrafter.com. It's just the word Jim and then crafter, C-R-A-F-T-E-R.com. And basically what I'm doing is I firmly believe that a, a home gym should be a staple in everybody's home. I mean, the real estate listing should say three bathrooms, two bedrooms, and a, and a gym. I, <laughs> I like that. So yeah. my goal is to have that in everybody's house. I love that you guys work with PRX, but yeah, it's 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 a few equipment reviews, but really it's it's a lot. You know, I've, I've done most of your programs and I put reviews up there for people to kind of see what a normal user would like. So I appreciate you. Let me give the shout out, man. I'm, I'm really on a mission to I quit a career of 30 years to do this for a living. So love it. I really believe in it. And you guys are really motivated me to, to take that big step. So thank you. Good awesome. Deal. Thank Tim. you. Keep Tim, doing man. it, man. You're Good doing luck. great. Good luck, brother. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So I got a question for you guys, right? Um, at some point in our lifetimes, the most houses come with a garage. It's going to be, no one's going to park cars in there because electric cars will take over. And it's probably be, a lot of people will be using these electric car services. Most likely you're not going to own a car. What do you guys think garages are going to be used for? Cause he said a gym in every house. And I thought, yeah, that would yeah, be great. Gym or convert it to a bedroom. That's right? what I thought yeah, too. Either a bedroom or, or, uh, or a gym, you know, yeah. what, you, what do you guys say? I mean, it's just going to depend, right? You know, how many, how many families could use an extra bedroom, right? Like I grew up in less, you know, uh, less bedrooms than kids type of household. Yeah. So in that household, that'll make sense. The there. garage would couldn't be converted to a bedroom. The fact that we've done that in some places that I live where mm -hmm. our family did that. So, but I actually think you could do both. Uh, that's, I mean, when you have like something, that's why I love PRX. Like, I mean, I, I park all my cars in the garage and I've got a gym in my yeah. garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that to me, that's like, that's what makes that so cool is that you don't have to sacrifice one. And technically if I wanted to convert it into a bedroom, I can have a bed in there too, yeah. you know? So that's what's no, cool. No, I, so I, I cool. agree. I, th I think, ha but I think having a gym at home, uh, especially if you prioritize fitness and you have a family and a job. So valuable. It's oh, yeah. so valuable. It's, I think it's, I recommend it to everybody. I, you know, I love talk. It was so great to meet Tim finally. Cause we we've talked about him for a while now and I love a, a client that's in this place. Yeah. Because there's so, we can it's go. It's fun now. Yeah. And it, maybe the only challenging for me or us on the, uh, doing this on a podcast is that I, I wish I was kind of with him week to week to kind of feel him out. Like, yeah. are, you, are you liking that? Or what do you think? You want to try this now? And 
I mean, this is a, this yeah. is a situation where I would try different things. Like Justin was saying, like th to me, this is such a great opportunity to pick up a new a new movement. Yeah, you know, and practice at it and get good at it. Totally. And, you're, and you're not training to lift a bunch of weight. You're training to get good at something. I think new. it's harder, you know, for somebody to think of those things on their own. And that's like, to your point. Like if I was coaching him specifically, I would have a lot of fun with yes. you know that. Yes. That mentality, because like I could introduce him to so many different things that um, it takes a lot of time to learn and develop these new skills. Um, but then once you establish those skills and you get proficient at them, it it, it complements so much of your work. I did that one summer. One summer I did every day. I had a dip pull up station, so I do dips, pull ups, and jump rope. And I thought oh, I'm going to get good at this and just practice this every day for 20 minutes. And I got really good at all three of them in a very short period of time. So. Yep. Our next caller is Drew from Indiana. What's up, Drew? How can we help you? What's up, guys? Hey, thanks for having me on. You got it. All right. So I'll give you a little background. Uh, my wife and I have been consistently macro tra tracking for approximately the last three and a half months. During that time, we completed MAPS power lift when we saw significant strength gains, however, no aesthetic gains in this phase, but by far our favorite program. We are now entering phase two of MAPS aesthetic. Um, throughout powerlift and phase one of MAPS Black, we were either in a slight caloric surplus or a maintenance phase. Um, now entering phase two of aesthetic, we're starting our calorie deficit. So you guys will be happy to know in maintenance, she was eating roughly 2,600 calories Damn. with no weight wow. change. Same for myself, but slightly higher calories. So prior to starting the program, I factored our macros using the old school nutritional guide from you guys. Um, and then now using the new calculator off the website, there were some um, macro discrepancies, I guess, if you will. So the question is, can you manipulate your macros or is it all calorie based? I understand going in waves with some days being bulk, some days maintenance and some days a cut, but manipulating fat and carbs from what is calculated, can you change your body composition or can you manipulate these based on how you feel and see, see the same aesthetic gains? Oh, that's so a for example, for example, in the bulk, my wife felt and lifted better with higher fat and slightly under carbs, but she noticed no aesthetic gains, just strength gains. She's also five months postpartum and breastfeeding, which may have played a role in this, but would she have seen more aesthetic gains sticking to her macros to a T or did that play no factor? Are we assuming calories are staying the same? Yes, sir. Yeah, most likely the same. And here's the thing. Keep in mind, when you manipulate carbohydrates, you're also going to end up seeing a difference in water retention in your body. For every three Perfect. grams of carbohydrates you intake, your body holds on to three ounces of water. So if she okay. redu if she were to reduce her carbohydrate intake, which could be uh, be a positive thing or a negative thing, looking at our physiques, like uh, if if the extra carbohydrates filled her muscle bellies out, it might make her look more fit. If the lower carbohydrate intake made her have a flatter look, it may make her muscles look less defined. But a lot of that is just the the perception. It's not really what's going on body fat percentage wise. So if calories are the same, uh, manipulating carbs or fat up or down uh, is really not going to make a difference on. So their aesthetic goals really it may temporarily for like a photo, you know. But what's really going on body fat percentage wise and building muscle um, is going to be the same if calories are equal. And really the answer for somebody is what do you feel best doing? Do you enjoy? the higher fat. And I love to play with both. And I encourage people to do both where you, you know, run a higher fat uh, for a while and see how you feel, then run lower carb and then cycle them around. And uh, I think it's good for us to kind of, uh, to mess with that. Um, sure. But you, you're, we're splitting hairs as far as like, you know, can you really make a, a difference aesthetically by not changing the calories, but by just ma manipulating macros, but visually, yes, like for temporarily, if that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I had you on the calories all the same and we're low carb, low carb, low carb, like really low carb for like four or five days in a row, calories all the same. And then all of a sudden I flip you to, you know, 350 grams of carbs, you will look different the next day. But it's not because you added a bunch more muscle or lost a bunch more fat. It's we, what we manipulated was the carbon take and probably the water retention that's going on. And so it will look different. So the feeling that she may have that she didn't really change aesthetically may be just because she was manipulating her carbohydrate intake. If that Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, cool. Drew, Drew, ultimately, here's what the studies say. And this is just general, okay? Because, you know, Adam said something that's very important. Uh, he referred to the individual experience because it can be very different from person to person. Right. Now, generally speaking, there's there's a minimum requirement when it comes to proteins and fats. Those are essential. 
So we gotta gotta say that because I don't want people listening to this and saying thinking they can cut fats or proteins out completely and be okay. You can't. You'll die. You need a minimum amount of protein and fat. Carbohydrates, they're not essential. You can cut those out completely. And you and some people would do just fine and you definitely wouldn't die, right? So there's that. Number two, studies show generally speaking, a high protein diet to be better for body composition. Uh, what's high protein? About 0.6 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight in, in average weight individuals. If you're really obese, then you want to go off of lean body mass. But that's generally true for most people. High protein diets tend to build more muscle. They tend to help with satiety, which also help uh, with fat loss. Carbs and fats are interesting. Now, again, generally speaking, studies show that uh, higher carbohydrate diets improve anaerobic performance. You'll be stronger. Does that contribute to more muscle gain? I, I believe it does. I've, I've tried to build muscle on a, on a low-carb, no-carb diet and on a higher-carb diet, yeah, calories being equal. I build more muscle with carbohydrates. Most people I've worked with are like this, but not all of them. There's some people who work much better the other way around. So that's generally speaking. Now, at the end of the day, though, there's some interesting individual variances. I've worked with people who do much better with diets that are low carbohydrates and high fat and, and, and vice versa. You also mentioned your wife is postpartum and breastfeeding. Her hormones are not going to be back to what they were before until she stops breastfeeding. It takes a few months after breastfeeding for things to kind of regulate. Okay. So whatever's working for her now is, is going to probably likely be different later on um, in terms of you know how she feels uh, and whatnot. So consider that well as well. And then aesthetically speaking... Um, you know, that's a tough one, right? Cause it's the mirror, it's your own perception. If right. you're getting stronger consistently, ultimately that's going to mean more muscle. So ultimately sure. means you end up building more muscle, which usually improves, uh, aesthetics, but that's, and she keeps telling me she's hungry. So that's yeah. a good sign. Yes. Very good. And it's a great sign. She's getting stronger. She has the energy. She feels good five months postpartum. I mean, I've trained a lot of women postpartum and most of them, don't start feeling like themselves until a few months after they stop breastfeeding. So sometimes that's a year later, and sometimes depending on when the when the when they stop the breastfeeding, that's more common in my experience. Uh, it's less common for someone to feel great, you know, a few months afterwards, and they're still breastfeeding. So consider all those things. But at the end of the day, it's the individual variance. So don't yeah. don't question too much when it's based off of how you feel. If your wife says, you know, I just I'm stronger and feel way better. When my carbohydrates are low, don't think to yourself, well, studies show that carbs are better for anaerobic. No, no, no. That's believe her. Like that's, that's what's going on for, her. and the same thing is true for yourself. So I've seen some pretty wild variations, uh, none of them outside of the general rules, but there's a lot of room within the, the kind of the general rules that I talked about. So consider awesome. that. Well, thanks guys. You got it, Drew. And you said you guys, guys are, take care. you guys, are, you guys are following maps aesthetic, right? Maps Aesthetic, we just entered phase two, did the first workout yesterday. What are you guys doing after that? We actually, we're going to run Maps OCR, I think. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. Yeah. What you, are, yeah, that'll be a great one. Do you guys that. have that program? I don't, sir. All right. You do now, Drew. <laughs> Thanks, man. You guys are awesome. <laughs> you got it, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Always looking for that Oprah moment. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I just <laughs> makes you feel good. You, know? you get yeah. a car. You get a car. Yeah. 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 costs a lot of money to electronically give someone access to it. <laughs> right, right. How much did he say she was She was on the cut now? 2600 like yeah, yeah, I was like, now, wow, she, that was amazing. Bro, this is five months postpartum. Now, consider she's when you're breastfeeding, you're also burning more yes, calories. Yes, but yes, yes, 2,600 yes. calories? I don't care, man. Yeah, great place. Legit. That is yeah. fire. No, it was a good question because I think- No, it is a great question. We sometimes overcomplicate. Mm -hmm. um, and then what that'll do, I mean, how many times have you guys worked with someone where they're- three months into a diet that they supposed to work right and they're like i feel terrible and you're like it's not working for you well it, it, it also <laughs> yeah. it also Don't highlights though it. when you when you ma manipulate carbohydrates like this how you can look different oh like totally you, you know I, that was one of the one of the things that's the that, fastest way to look different yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. one of the things that i struggled with on the ketogenic diet was also just my pumps were terrible totally. and i never felt i never felt filled out totally um, and being, being that that's my insecurities, being the skinny little guy or like that. I remember it messing with my head being like, oh man, I just don't feel so you could easily be doing great, but because your your muscle bellies aren't all filled out, you think you're not making gains that you potentially yeah. are. So just, or vice like, versa. You're the, right. you're the person who's so scared of being, you know, heavy, you cut carbs, you lose five pounds of water and you're like, this is the one, for right, me. right. even though you're constipated and you feel like crap. Right. Our next color is Megan from Georgia. Megan, what's happening? How can we help you? 
Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Thanks for calling in. So um, a little bit of backstory. My goal right now is to lose body fat percentage. That's what I'm really trying to focus on. Um, roughly about seven to eight percent, I would say. I'm following MAPS aesthetic and I'm very disciplined on my diet. I rarely ever miss a workout, I try and get in all of my protein every single day. Um, I feel like I do everything right, but I'm not seeing a significant change in my body for the effort that I'm putting in. Mm. Um, my husband and I have very busy social lives. Um, I travel for work a lot. We go to baseball games. We go to breweries on the weekend. Um, so drinking alcohol, unfortunately, and you know, fortunately, um, is a huge part of my life. So the main area I'd like to see a change in is my core. I've got good muscle tone all around, I think, or I'm pretty happy with it at least. Um, but after having a C-section, you know, my abs have never really been the same. So my question is, um, is alcohol really that big of a detriment to fat loss? Or can I still enjoy a few drinks every week and see results? And if it is, you know, what are some tips on changing my mentality um, for the short term? You know, I don't believe this is something I could or would want to do and definitely, you know, cut it out my life, cut it out of my life completely. Um, but I do know that sacrifices might need to happen in order to reach a short-term goal. So I wanted to get your take on that, and um, hopefully get some some tips. I mean, Megan, have you have you tried smoking weed? <laughs> <laughs> it does, yes, and I don't really enjoy no, it. No calories. I hope, she, I hope she still likes this after this answer. No, no, no. I enjoy the the I mean, my physique speaks for itself. Drinking, so. like sitting out on a patio and having a glass of wine, and I, I'm totally you know, joking. The social aspect. I am totally joking. I'm not. I'm. I'm it's a joke. <laughs> Okay, so so um, alcohol has got about seven calories per uh, per gram. Essentially, it's almost as high in, in calories as uh, as fat. fat. So it's pretty high in calorie. It's mm -hmm. not a benign drink, obviously. Well, you, you know this already. Yeah, there's you got to fat has some actually benefits to it. There's like zero benefits for the alcohol. Aside least, from the social. Yeah, uh, yeah no, yeah. yeah. As far as like what it's aesthetically speaking, since yeah. we're talking about body fat percentage goals, at least fat has some. You know properties to it that are yeah. beneficial for your there's fat essential loss fatty acids. There is nothing essential yeah. about alcohol. Yeah, well, for how us drinkers? How many okay, <laughs> Justin's uh, with can you? I talk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Courtney and I have actually gone through this a bit. You you would be surprised at how much like inflammation uh, you that is displays from. Uh, it's very visible that you know us drinkers. <laughs> that, it, that it portrays. So, uh, if you cut it down and reduce it down, it it does make a substantial difference. So to say that it's like, uh, you know, a calories in, calories out thing is is really not the whole story. Yeah, there's more. But you know, Megan, I'm, let's get more specific. I want you to be really honest. Okay, how many drinks uh, do you average a day? Um, I don't drink every day, every and I knew day. that question was coming. So I don't drink every day. It's mostly like on a Friday or a Saturday, um, especially like a Saturday where we might have a you know a couple glasses of prosecco at brunch, and then it leads into um, you know a couple glasses of of wine at dinner. And so for the full you know maybe Thursday to Sunday, it's probably around ten to twelve drinks. I would say. Okay. And a mixture of that. So like truly wine, um, like a vodka soda water. I stay away from heavy beer. I stay away from the mixed sugary drinks. So, But it's still, I'm seeing, like you said, the inflammation. And I know I, I know it's lots the Lots of bloat, lots problem, of inflammation. But, I mean, if you're going for aesthetic goals, this is definitely a deterrent. Yeah, I mean, just yeah okay. Line. You could trade, you could trade, look, you could try doing this. A lot of people try doing this. I, I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you it's a very hard, it's, it's not going to give you what you want necessarily, but- some people trade alcohol calories for food calories. So they say, okay, I'm having two glasses of wine. That's going to give me 300 calories. That means I had to cut my, my food intake by 300 calories or whatever to make okay. up the difference. So, I mean, you can do the, that. The Adam, what Adam said is 100% right. Yeah, though. The, there's no nutritional value. That's the problem with that. If you trade out 1,000 calories of, say, fat, carbohydrates, protein for 1,000 calories of alcohol, it's not an even exchange. Yeah. Because the 1,000 calories of food, give, especially with protein and stuff, and especially since most of my female clients struggle with hitting protein, if you replace that with alcohol, it's not just an, an even trade. It might be on the scale, so maybe the scale doesn't really move that much because the calories are the same, but you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to sustain the same muscle mass. Here's, a, here's the, the, the come to Jesus moment I would have with you if you were my client, 
would be yeah. That's kind of what I was hoping for. <laughs> okay, so here's the here's the deal. Is like you're you're five six and one fifty one. I I I without even seeing you right now, I, I imagine you're in pretty good shape. I mean, but it sounds like you want more. You want this. Yes. I want to look badass in my bikini, which is totally a fair goal. But what comes with that is another level of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the question is, do you really want it that bad? Is it worth giving up some of those social events that you really enjoy doing? And yeah. I and I would not impose my thoughts on on you at all. Mm, I would right. I would I would pull it out of you. I would say, listen, Megan, I think you you look great. You're doing great. You've got great balance in your life. Sounds like you and your husband have a great weekends mm -hmm. and you enjoy yourself and you still manage to stay in shape the rest of the time. Like I, I would really challenge you and say, is that bikini body that you're saying, is it really something you really, really want that bad? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. so, then we have to evaluate some of these other things that you're doing that fly right in the face of those results. So that that would be my come to Jesus yeah, moment with yeah. you is is challenging your thoughts on your do you really want that that bad or does it sound like yeah i'd really like that but i don't want to give this up like if you're saying shit like that to me then i'm just going to tell you like listen you got you got good balance right can now. it be a season you know can, right. can, can you look at it like that like right now we're just tightening it up and this is a goal of yours that's very focused for a goal you know it just requires a bit more to get further and uh i don't know exactly like so is this in terms of your training, so you said you're doing more like aesthetic type training right now. It was like, maps aesthetic. Yeah, I'm following maps, maps aesthetic. aesthetic. Okay, uh, and how how long have you been doing that style of training? Is my question. I have been lifting consistently for about a year and a half. Um, before then, I was all I was the cardio train and the Orange Theory and oh. you know the berries. Um, I love that style of training. And then I had a coworker who kind of introduced me to more like five by five workouts. And then I found your guys's podcast and absolutely fell in love with it. Love the process, but as I mean, I, and I have to get up at five 30 every morning and work out because I have a child. Um, so I'm, I make it happen. I make it work. I'm super disciplined in my nutrition. And for me, it's almost like I'm doing all of this work and not seeing the results I want. So something has to give. Yeah, I, so yeah. that is the come to Jesus, you know, question, I guess, like what are, are what am I okay with? Yeah, try these two things. Yeah. Try cutting yeah. one day of alcohol and try reducing the volume of your training. I think MAPS Aesthetic is too much volume. Yeah, It's too much volume for most people. So many people pick that program because it's called Aesthetic. Yeah. But it's it's a lot of, it's it's too much volume for me it's most of the time. Anabolic, yeah. Yeah, I, I follow MAPS Aesthetic and then for three months I do stuff with low volume. I can't do it consistently. I've been working out for a long time, you know, and, and so- mm -hmm. I would say two things you could do. You could cut one day of alcohol, like Justin said, make it a season. That'll make a big difference, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I, when I work, when sure. I train clients like you, because you sound like like a lot of people I've trained, we cut one day of alcohol out, and they're like, "Whoa, this is huge!" <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy, uh, what a difference. One makes. day, so you could do that, and then I would go maps performance or maps anabolic, because aesthetic is a lot of volume. You might be training too much, considering your busy life. Um, and your workout history, give and that, her, that just means you're not going to respond very quickly. Give her anabolic, Doug, and I'm gonna I'm gonna push you a little bit different, Megan. I I like what Justin said. I would because when, when is Vegas? By the way, do you have a Vegas trip planned? I do. It's uh, six weeks away. Okay. See, so th this oh, is okay. what what I would inc I would encourage you. Hey, six weeks of your life, I believe you you have you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So a week of that is Paul, a bachelorette trip in Palm Springs and a golf tournament in Hilton Head on the beach. So <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, you want to look good. So here we go. <laughs> oh man, it's all, it's also weeks, You know what too? It's also fun to abstain to abstain and then go have alcohol when you haven't had it yes. for five, four or five okay. weeks. I mean so that 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 would be what I, I would do for you is just I said I would say let's let's challenge yourself and let's let's pretend like I'm trying to get you ready for a bikini show. Okay. And let's let's train, let's eat, and let's sacrifice that way for a while and see how you like it. And what you may see is maybe um, giving up a few of those social events uh, you see is worth it. You might go, God damn, I've never looked and felt this way before. And saying no to yeah. a few weekends in a row wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And it's, it's definitely made up <laughs> for the way I feel now. Or 
you may be like, I feel a little bit better, but I don't feel that much better. And boy, I really missed out those last couple of weekends. Right. Fuck that. I'd rather, you know, work <laughs> through my insecurities about my body than actually yeah. you know, sacrifice that social side of the. So that that would be, if we were training together, this would be kind of the conversations you and I would be having during mm -hmm. this process. And really, my goal as the coach is to really get down to what it is that you truly, truly want. You know, in, in, in theory, it does sound great to have this great bikini body and then also be able to drink, you know, a thousand calories of alcohol every week. But the, the reality is that they, they just, they completely conflict with each other. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think that disciplining yourself for a four to six week period of time of like some serious sacrifice on the alcohol side, just to see what kind of, what, what that could potentially do as far as changing your physique. I, I would probably try and get you to at least try that and then us together decide like, okay, was that worth it or not? Great advice. And, and, and again, it's also fun to abstain and then go somewhere where you really let loose. It could make the trip so much funner to show up. Oh man, the last five weeks I was strict and I trained and I'm yeah, lean. You, you work towards it. And yeah. now we're going to party and have a good time. And uh, I mean, that's the way I kind of do it. I don't know if that's necessarily a healthy that's approach, a, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, you know, especially if you know how to balance Personally, it out afterwards. So, so. Right. All right. But that helps a lot. That's really actually what I was looking to hear. So I think that awesome. um, that's great advice. I do have a question, though, about something you said with MAPS aesthetic, because mm -hmm. I'm in phase two, and I honestly don't feel like it is too much volume. Um, I think I put in my notes, you know, I was an ex-gymnast, ex-cheerleader. So physically, I am pretty fit. So if you think it's too much volume, can I ask why you think that? Or? It, just, it just is for most people and based off okay. of your busy lifestyle. But what makes you feel like it's not enough volume? Um, I don't know that it's not enough. I think it is a good amount. Like I did um, the, I, I did it this morning and at the end of my workout, I didn't feel exhausted. I felt ready for the day. Um, even on some of the moves, I felt like I could have done like four or five reps instead of three yeah. are you, um, are you getting reps. stronger I was I was get those next steps are, 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 um, you, are you getting stronger megan i am yeah, oh well, I, you're I, doing yeah, fine yeah, then. i'm not yeah i'm not i'm not against her staying with you're fine she, if you're getting stronger it's, okay. it's fine if you're not getting stronger then if she's then, getting stronger yeah. you're not suffering from a bunch of chronic pain you feel good mm -hmm. at the end of your workouts right. there's times yeah. you feel yeah. you do more i think you're in a good place i think you're in a good place and the real thing the real conversations around the alcohol yeah. thing right now yeah. it really is yeah. like uh, getting to drink a thousand calories of alcohol every, every weekend is a very nice luxury to have and to be honest i think again i can't see you but knowing mm -hmm. you're five six and one 51 i i definitely know you're not obese i know you're in a, yeah. probably a pretty good place you're just critical of yourself and you want another mm -hmm. level of fitness and another level of fitness comes another level of sacrifice and that's what i would tell you if you were my client and you know maybe you think you really want that but maybe when you do it i mean here's the deal um i have no desire to walk around like uh, competitive adam did it, it felt cool it was really cool when i did it and it felt amazing and it was the best i ever felt in my life looks wise but the amount of sacrifice uh, that I had to do in order to to maintain a physique like that, it just wasn't worth it. I'm, Katrina's family gets together and barbecues and drinks damn near every weekend also. And I like to go and do events. I like to eat out and I just enjoy a lot of those things. And so I prefer to have a more balanced life. Now, if I had a Vegas trip coming up in six weeks, I have the tools and the ability to say, you know what, I can clamp down and say no to a couple of these events or not drink at them for six weeks just so I could bring the best version of me to Vegas. Like, And I would, but other, if it's the rest of the year, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy the nice balance of my life, and you're you're healthier that way, truthfully. Yeah, he's, he's right. much, it's much nicer and to hug you. Better too. too, your workouts are better. Yeah, I totally get it. yes, yeah, excellent. Well, maybe right. we're, we're sending you a free maps anabolic anyway. So. Oh well, thank you, no thank problem. you. Yeah. All right, well, thank good luck. Have, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It was very helpful. Thank right, you. Megan, have fun right. in Vegas. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, does she not sound like? So many clients. Oh, that's another. You know, <laughs> yeah, today's questions. I felt like were like a lot of a lot of. Yeah, you guys answered. I mean, uh, beautifully. I, I I loved what you guys said because it's that's. I mean, it's really what it's what it boils down to. It's like, well, yeah. which one's more important 
to you because that was always a trade off, and I think people want both, but you can't necessarily have both. And, and I know there, there's there's a fitness person right now that is you know <laughs> grumbling because they have found a way to look yeah. shredded themselves, and they drink. On I a drink basis. all kinds of white yeah. claws and zemas, and they use that as a selling point <laughs> cool, and an dude. angle to people that they're able to do that. They're probably fucking twenty eight years old and move like crazy and have a lot of muscle mass and. It's like for the average person that, you know, average mom that just wants to look good for Vegas time, the, the thing I would tell her is just like, hey, let's yeah. just let's just buckle down for the next six yeah, weeks. Tighten it up, man. Yeah. Alcohol is an interesting substance because it ruins your aesthetics, but it makes everybody else you look at more aesthetic. So <laughs> yeah. it's a very weird substance. It's a double-edged sword. It's, just, it's hard for somebody uh, her size to allow that many calories of alcohol. It's more than a thousand, bro. If it's T if it's like that's 12 right. drinks, I mean, yeah, it's more like 13, 14 hertz. Right, calories, right, right. So that's a that's a lot. And yeah. and think in order to not gain a bunch of weight from that, you've got to pull out other calories. So what are we pulling out? You know, what are you, what are you, what all are you, valuable stuff? Yeah. You, what are you sacrificing? Most likely some proteins, carbs, and fats, and all, th all those things contribute to your aesthetics. So, not to mention, you know, getting munchies and cravings yeah. while you're drinking. And not to mention what you said too. Like a lot of things, like uh, Katrina, I, like when Katrina stopped, like, so she did, she went dry the whole January, right? And instantly she looked like she lost 15 pounds. It's inflammation. It's, yeah. Because she's in, and I, Courtney, was, I was explaining to her, I'm just like, Even it's not, me, this is all, it's, it's not like you, it's not like you lost <laughs> 10 to 15 pounds. What happened was that your body released that water that you're holding on. You were, so you were, in, you were inflamed. And that just shows you that it, it, alcohol is insult is insulting you. You just don't, yeah. you've learned to live with that for so long that you don't think I mean, it's, it's really not going to get you stage ready. Yeah. yeah. And I want to reiterate <laughs> cannabis has zero calories. <laughs> <laughs> Our next caller is Jamie from Arizona. Jamie, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi there, guys. I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much for all of your great information. Um, I wouldn't be the personal trainer I am today without your help, and I think my horses have benefited from it as well. So um, wow. anyways, I'll get into my Those question. Um, I'm a barrel racer. I'm a horse trainer, and I'm also a personal trainer, um, and I'm looking to currently optimize my routine. So I'm running MAPS performance right now three times a week, and um, I am about happy with my appearance, but I need to lighten up my body weight a little bit for my sport of barrel racing. Um, typically, I ride about five horses a day, um, so I'm very active, and amongst those days of training and doing the, the horse riding, I'm also teaching spin class at the gym two times a week. Ooh. Um, right now I weigh about 160 pounds. I'm five foot eight and I'm sitting at 18% body fat. Um, I'm eating 3000 calories a day and I have the feeling, um, I might be doing a little bit too much with my training right now. Um, I am also a little bit worried about cutting back on my current routine, um, uh, because I don't want to lose any of my glute gains that I worked very hard for. Um, and also, I think um, my barrel racing is definitely becoming my number one priority and starting to race professionally. And so that's where I really want to back off on my weight a little bit. And I'm willing to lose some gains um, to sacrifice to run faster um, in the saddle. So um, whatever you guys have for advice, I'm, I'm willing to take it. I've been loving MAPS performance so far. So Jamie, thank you so much for that amazing program. Jamie, Jamie, <laughs> wow. you're... you're I mean, you're you're obviously a high level athlete. 160 pounds, five eight, 18 percent body fat. Three thousand calories, and you eat three thousand calories a day. You have a lot of muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I mean, it's your program. It's been great. Oh, <laughs> that's, I can't well, that's eat also enough, great like. commercial. Though. That's incredible. I mean, that's you're you're really <laughs> use that. Yeah. here's the deal. You're lean, so in order to lose more weight, I mean, we could get you leaner. Uh, but you, you might have to lose a little bit of muscle too, to, in order to be more effective at your sport. So, that, cause there's a, with what you're talking about, you're talking about strength versus weight ratio. Um, yes. so, and that's going to be really tough. You've got a lot of muscle on your body. This is more of a diet thing than a training thing. Uh, cutting your calories will get you where you want to go. Um, and you're already eating 3000. You have a big, you have a lot of room to go down. So cutting your yes. calories is going to get you what you're looking for. Will you lose some of your booty gains? I mean, maybe a little bit, but uh, with the amount of the, the muscle and the body fat percentage that you're at, 
I don't think you're going to, I think you'll be just fine. I think you're going to be totally fine. That's all I would do is I would just, I would just pull back the calories a little bit and just see what happens yeah. from there. I mean, in a perfect world, I might have you, I would like you to probably cut back a little bit on the amount of stuff that you're doing, but honestly, like you're, you're a high performing athlete. You're eating a good amount of calories for sure. You're at a great body weight and body fat percentage. You just obviously say you want to drop a little bit more to improve your, your sports, your performance. Um, so yeah, I would just, I would restrict calories a little bit and you've got plenty of room to do yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, if so. you went down to 2,500, you would end up losing some weight and I don't think you would lose a lot of strength doing that. So your strength to weight ratio would probably be pretty darn good. But I mean, again, the numbers you're giving us is like, yeah, run, run a, run a 2,500 calorie diet for two or two weeks or so, and then go back to like a 2,800 calories and see how you feel in, in that range and see how you, see how you look, yeah. feel and weight, what, what it's at right around there. I'd play with that. Okay, thank you. Because I, I jumped down to 2300 while I was running MAPS HIT. I actually got the, I think it's called the Sexy Athlete Bundle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I ran MAPS HIT and that just felt like a little too low calorie for the 2300 jumping, you know, down from 3000. Yeah, that's that's a big jump. I, I go down fi 500 is the most I would yeah. do with, with, with someone as active as you, with as much muscle as you have. And I'd actually, and as lean as you are. And I'd only do it for like two weeks and then I'd actually uh, put you back yeah. up to like 28. I just, I would use the 20, the, the 500 calorie drop for two weeks just to see if I can drop you a couple pounds real quick. And then I'd put you at a more, yeah. more balanced place, like 20 where you're probably going to feel pretty damn yeah, good cause, at it. Because 18% body fat, too, for a female is lean. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're doing great. I wouldn't want you much. If you, as an athlete, I wouldn't want you lower than, I mean, at the leanest, 16, 17% at the lowest. Any lower than that, oh. you might start to notice changes in hormones and, uh, and in performance. Eh, that's yes and no to that. I mean, it depends. Because here's the thing like, Katrina, you would never guess what Katrina's body fat percentage is. She walks around at 11%, bro. Oh wow! Consistently, but so a lot of people just how where and how you really? store it. Yes, eleven to that twelve. So I've lean. never seen Katrina test over thirteen, and she doesn't look hmm. that lean. It depends. It, it, there's there's definitely a variance. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm speaking generally. Right? Yeah, so I just want to be careful while telling because yeah. she may be able to go down. But few. considering how much work she's doing, the amount of muscle she carries, how many calories she's eating, mm -hmm. I yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't try and chase getting super shredded. Uh, but cutting your calories, like we said, I think that would be it. That would be answer. If you feel like you're working out too much because you feel tired and fatigued and your joints are stiff, then you probably are doing a little too much, in which case I'd say... Well, I like her shift down. from hit to performance. Yeah, anyway, performance is because, perfect. Because, yeah, you're, you're now you're reinforcing and getting the mobility sessions in between, and, you know, it's it's got more restorative elements in there. Um, but, yeah, if everything you're doing, you're so active uh, to begin with. This is a hard one for me to... You know, weight cuts in general are really a hard one for, for athletes when they're already performing at a high it's level. It's the whole weight versus the weight to strength ratio yeah. thing, right, that you're that you're aiming for. But, Jamie, what's the... if you don't, Do you know what the average weight is of a, of a high level, of a competitor at your level at your sport? So most of the girls I'm competing against, they're around 120 to 130. Okay. 130 so, pounds. So you're, you're a good 30 pounds heavier than the average one, but... You're probably yeah. also a lot stronger, right? So right. That plays a role, um, but then again, you're obviously on a horse, so the the weight can make a difference. So she's tall too, right? Didn't you? You said five you were eight. five eight, right? Yeah, five eight. Yeah, yes. you're probably taller than the average girl too. I'd imagine that they're probably more like five three ish, right? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're yeah. very petite girls, um, yeah. similar to jockeys. You know, you want to be lightweight um, so mm -hmm. that those horses can run super yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the calorie thing that we advise is fine, and then. I wouldn't chase it too hard to try to to lose too much because then you're going to be losing a lot of muscle um, and you'll be sacrificing – like you're in a really good place, Jamie. And yeah. Pat, when you're done with the sport, you're going to still be with this body. So I wouldn't want you to That's the real, try to lose a ton yes, of muscle to, yes. to win this competition and then afterwards be you know stuck in, in this kind of bad position. Oh, okay. That's a really good point. Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking I might end up losing a little bit of muscle. Um so I'm just playing around with a good balance of how I can maintain some muscle mass, but also um, lighten up just a little bit. So that's that's very helpful. Yeah, Thank I, you. I, I wouldn't have you lose. I wouldn't have you go below 150. I mean, you're 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 really you're in a great place. Um, fast metabolism. I mean, this is going to be this is going to carry you for a long time if if you if you can maintain this this you know this physique. It's really good. Excellent. And as far as my training goes, um, after MAPS performance, should I cycle into um, like an anabolic phase or um, what would you guys suggest for following uh, MAPS performance? If you're going to keep doing what you're doing with the horses, um, I would say a, a, more, a little more functional, similar-ish program to, to anabolic would be MAPS Strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have MAPS Strong? 
Um, I do not currently have okay. that. No. All right, good. We got something we can send you then. We'll send you map strong. Gosh, thank you guys so much. I've been wanting to try that one in particular, but I wasn't sure um, sure how to go about it. You know, after which phase I should uh, uh, put it in at. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so there you go. Is there, is there anything else we can help you with? Um, no, thank you guys so much for everything. Like I said, you've even made my horses better. I'm training them better. Wow. I'm training my clients better. And so I really, I have a lot of appreciation for you guys and for your show. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thank you so much awesome. for calling in. Thank you, Jamie. Keep killing it. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. That's a, that was a hard one because yeah. she was like, I mean, calories are high, fast metabolism, a lot of muscle. She's lean. It's like, ugh. and I've done this. I've trained athletes where we, in order to get them in a weight class, yeah. you know, we have to drop some muscle. And I hate, as a trainer, getting someone to lose muscle is like cutting off a limb. Know. You know what it's I mean? It's similar to people that are like really responsive in certain muscles and their body parts. And they're like, I just don't want to train it anymore. Yeah. yeah like, what? <laughs> well, like, look at you. This, is, awesome. this is also an example where, you know, high level sports aren't necessarily really healthy for us either, right? Because like if she was like so competitive that we were for going sure. to sacrifice. And starve herself. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. you definitely could. I mean, we could put her on 2000 calories and say, run that for the next yeah. few weeks. Let's lose and, 12 to 15 pounds yeah, of muscle. Yeah. Let's lose 15 pounds knowing that a big portion of that's going to be muscle also um, just so she could be, uh, you know, a half a second faster on the horse. Um, that's possible. And some people would make that sacrifice mm -hmm. because they care that much about the sport. But I love that you you brought it back because I was going to say something and then you started to allude to this by asking her about after she's done doing this. Like if this is not your end all be all, then you want to consider like what does life look like after you're and, not barrel and racing And it's anymore. not as easy of a trade as people think. You know, I've, I've trained wrestlers where, I mean, it's very strict weight classes. And I trained a, a young athlete. He was a collegiate wrestler. And he was in a particular weight class and he had to constantly starve himself to be there. Mm -hmm. And his, the idea was, well, I'm, I'm bigger than everybody else at that weight class because I'm starving myself. I said, but you're also weaker and more tired. Right. Why don't we try the next weight class? And yes, guys will be bigger than you. You know, it'll be easier for them to be, at least you'll be fed. It'll be more natural to your actual weight. And he crushed. Yeah. He crushed. He felt so much better. Yeah, so it's not as energetic. easy as you think. Exactly. Look, thanks for listening to Mind Pump. If you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me only on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 